Hello, I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, this is a new week, and I trust the Lord. See, the Lord has said this is a month of prayer. I don't know how well you're submitting yourself to the Lord. But then he said the kind of prayer he's guiding us to pray, or the activity of prayer that we're engaging in this time around, is prayer to become prayer to become. Now, he's already granted us everything that we need to be. But then by the Spirit of God walking in us, he is causing us to become in truth that which he has already set apart or set us for to become. Praise God. Before we go into today's broadcast, we are going to have a great week, trust me. Can we make demand for our daily bread? You know, the Lord commanded us to do this. And when we do it, we do it in faith. Release your faith with me now and say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. It's coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, turn your Bibles with me to Luke chapter 18. That's where we have been. Praise God. Verse 1. And he spake, now this is Jesus he's talking about, and he spake a parable unto them to this end that men ought always to pray and not to faint. That men ought always to pray and not to faint. And I've been telling you all months that you will only faint because you did not pray. The only thing that will keep you from fainting, that's giving up. Fainting there means giving up. The thing that will keep you from giving up is when you pray. And when you pray, what gives you strength is the visitation of angelic beings. Praise God. Yes. Angels visit you. You know, sometimes people just have all kinds of funny ideas. You know, I've been in a, a long time in this gospel, okay? And being a long time in this gospel, now when I say being a long time in the gospel, means I've spent a good number of my years trying to understand the mind of God, not just for my life, but my, my, my greatest concern made from many years ago have been to picture God's agenda. What is God up to? What is this whole thing we are doing? What's the purpose of salvation? Why did Jesus come? Now, those are the questions that have been raining in my heart for many years. Now, of course, you've been carrying those questions for many years. And you're dealing with God. You should begin to receive answers. Praise God. And and so the kind of understanding God gives to me are things that are related with his walk. Not just on earth. It's his whole walk in the universe. You see, so I'm not just concerned about what what God wants to do with me. I I want to see what is on your mind. Why all this thing? Why do you go all this way? Why, Why would you do this in the first place? Until your mindset begin to go or become in tune with the mindset of God in all his work. You've not even started. If you don't picture the work of God, if, 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 if you even if understand, now this is not just because, you know, God does it to preachers. No, everyone. Everyone. Now that's what the Bible meant when he said in Ephesians chapter 1. Let's go there quickly. Ephesians chapter 1. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lipa katusha katila Oh, your glory fills the earth. Your glory fills the earth. Verse 17, Ephesians chapter 1. Now, Paul was praying for the church. He was praying for the brethren in Ephesus. And then he says that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you, he calls it the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God. 
to know him doesn't just mean for him to appear to you. There are many people who have had experiences that the Lord appeared to them and truly speaking, they got nothing from that experience. It's more like even a wish that Jesus actually appeared to them. God, when, when you hear the things, they, they begin to say, like, are you okay? Like, for real? And not because your mindset is not matured enough to comprehend what they are saying, but they, they, they had an experience with Jesus and all they are concerned about is the fleshly. You know, people are, are amazing. It's all in the mind. <laughs> You have an experience with Jesus and all you're concerned about is it's just like meeting a great man, a great human being in, in, in any area. And all your concern is how to take a picture with that person so that you can post it on your social media and people will see that you actually met this man. Now that's all your concern. So even when you're in his presence, like all your mind is like how to take a picture with him. Should I ask him, you know, or should I just jump in his face and, and take that picture? But beyond that, you didn't just meet that person so that you can take a picture with him. You met that person to reason out something. So what impact? Really, what impact? Now, why do they want to post pictures? They want to use those pictures to let people feel I'm close to this person, so you need me. You understand? So they want to use the person to feel important. And some people also have used that to take money or defraud people. I know him now. Ah, he's my, look at, I have a picture. See me, see me. This was when we were eating lunch together at uh, Soso Hotel. See me. This was, in fact, this was in his house, just in his bedroom. Like, he's like, you really, you mean you're really close? Oh, ah, I can call him now on the phone. And why are they doing all that? They want to so that you trust them and so that you can tell them, oh, can you, can you give me a cost? Can you tell him to? And then they now begin to defraud you. So they are meeting that person. All their concern was how to use that person to make gain for themselves. The image of that person to make gain for themselves. It's the same thing with preachers and the Lord Jesus Christ. So some people just want to have this experience. Oh Lord, appear to me. Oh God, appear to me. Now, have you seen people pray that? Or maybe you've even prayed that prayer before. Lord, I, I just want you to appear to me. Appear, Lord, appear, Lord, appear. His appearing to you may not make so much meaning to you. Yes. If your mind is not tuned towards understanding his will, his purpose, when he appears to you, all you'll be concerned about is how to tell the story. You know, Jesus can be talking to you. He's like, wow, man, when I preach and tell people that I saw you, he's right there talking to you. And all you're concerned about is, hey, I'm going to pass ah, Sunday service. I'm going to tell them that Jesus appeared to me. And wow, oh, they will know. They will know I'm close to Jesus. And then Jesus is there. He, see, the moment he noticed that he doesn't have your attention, he will switch. And here you are. So Jesus appeared to me. And then you now use that to become your validation to say anything you want to say. Not because you, you are saying exactly what he said to you. So now you want people to believe you because for Jesus to appear in your bedroom, then you are something special. That's how people think. But like I said, his appearing to you can even become your greatest undoing. Because you didn't know the purpose of his appearance. You didn't use it well. He appeared to you to share the thoughts of his heart. So when Paul was praying here, he says, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, verse 17, Ephesians chapter 1, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. May he give unto you the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Let me tell you something. You see this prayer, it's one prayer you must deeply pray for yourself. Lord, grant me your spirit of wisdom and revelation. Grant me, Lord, your spirit of wisdom and revelation. If this becomes your prayer every day. Now, 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 try this. Try this. Try this for at least three months. 
I could have said it here. But but if you see that something is changing, you should know that you're doing the right thing. So, so you continue. Praying this prayer every day and mean it with your heart. Lord, grant me the, your spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of you. If this becomes your prayer, I'm telling you the depths of wisdom because he will answer your prayer. He will answer you. You know, what is called the spirit of wisdom? Is it wisdom? You can define wisdom to be, you know, you've had different definitions of wisdom. But you see, there is the wisdom of this world and there is the wisdom that is out of this world. The wisdom of this world, now when I say the wisdom of this world, I'm not even referring to the, the human wisdom, okay? I'm referring to wisdom that comes from God, wisdom that God gives, okay? So there is a wisdom that God gives that is for this world. And then there is the wisdom that God gives that is beyond this world. Now that differentiates in, in hierarchy who is wiser than who. For example, Solomon in scripture was given wisdom. And, and we even get into that argument sometimes. Solomon was the wisest man that ever lived. If you are talking about earthly wisdom in human affairs, maybe yes. But there is another kind of wisdom that exists. And that's the wisdom into the insight of God's person, his character, and his works. Now, that's the kind of wisdom that someone like Daniel had. So, if I ask you today, who, who, was, who, who was wiser between Daniel and Solomon? Most of you will go with Solomon because Solomon did a good PR with his wisdom. <laughs> good. Yes, he did. So, he's known all over. He was known all over the world. Wow, the wise son of David. The wise son of David. The wise son of David. Wow. But Solomon's wisdom, do you realize, only had to do with the earthly affairs of man. And God spoke about the wisdom of Daniel, even to the devil himself. You find that in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 28. Let me, let me read this. The word of the Lord, verse 1, Ezekiel 28. The word of the Lord came unto me, came again unto me, saying, Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus. Now, notice they say to the prince, you know, you know the thing about Ezekiel, he, he prophesied about Tyrus. He prophesied about the land itself, Tyrus. Then he prophesied about the prince of Tyrus. Then he prophesied about, prophesied about the king of Tyrus. Now, the prince when you look at these prophecies and, and there's something you need to understand about God and the way he speaks because many people don't a lot of people misjudge prophecies and they misjudge it because they try to understand prophecies with their minds so they jump into conclusion they judge and say this is the meaning of the prophecy when the prophecy has not even started being fulfilled So here yeah, he's talking about the, the, the prince of Tyros. Who's the prince of Tyros? Not a human being. Not a human being. He wasn't talking about a physical prince. Now it says, Thus says the Lord again unto me, saying, Say to son of man, say unto the prince of Tyros, Thus saith the Lord God, because thy heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seats of God in the midst of the sea, yet thou art a man and not God. Though thou set thy heart as the heart of God. Behold, now look at verse 3, behold thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can hide from thee. This was God's testimony about this prince of Tyre. Now, when you study the book of Daniel, you will notice that he called angelic beings princes. 
Can you remember when, when Daniel was waiting and then the angel came and brought his answer from heaven and said, look, when God, as soon as you began to pray, I left swiftly, but there was a problem. The prince of Persia withstood me these 21 days. The prince of Persia withstood Daniel for 21 days. So there, are, there are, he called it the prince of Persia. And then also in the book of Daniel, he referred to Michael as Daniel's priest. Now, that prince, sorry, prince, not priest. That prince there is not talking about the son of a king. Okay, that's not what he was referring to. Now, so when he talked about the prince of Persia, he wasn't talking about a physical prince. He was talking about the son of the king of Pesha. He was referring to the guardian angel over Pesha. I have explained that in previous videos before. That was not a demonic spirit. Most people have, have classified that, that um, angel as a demonic angel, like a fallen angel. No, sir. It was just an angel that was doing his job. Even though he went overboard, but then he was trying to do his job. So here he says, but thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can be hid from thee. This was the character of Daniel. He was wise and there's no secret that can be what? Hidden from him. This was not like Solomon. Solomon was just a wise man in his earthly affairs. But Daniel received secrets from God. God showed Daniel things of his heart, showed him the future. Why? Because Daniel was carrying the, the, the secret of God. The wisdom of God was upon him. They are not the same thing. The kind of Solomon's wisdom can easily lead you into trouble because it's human beings that recognize that you're wise. I love the way this guy talks. I just, I mean, the guy, whenever he talks. The kind, meanwhile, the kind of Daniel's wisdom will repel people from you. People will hate you. You'll be a loner. Why? You are speaking from a realm that they have not touched. You are speaking from a realm that they cannot even touch. And so, so you're, 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 you're speaking and then, what is he talking about? What are you saying? But, but Solomon's wisdom, they are relatable, okay? He's talking about life, he's talking about, but Daniel is talking about things to come years from now. Hmm. Verse 3 again, Ezekiel 20. Behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that can hide from thee. Did you see that? Now, you, he just said you are wiser than Daniel. And, and this is how I dealt with you. Now, it's believed in this verse of scripture, God was dealing with Lucifer or an angel that was, um, I think he was talking to Lucifer. Why? Because God had given Lucifer in charge of the earth. Lucifer was the one in charge of the earth. He, he was in, in the Garden of Eden. He lived today. Oh, some of you don't understand the war that, that was going on. He lived today. That's where he was living. And God came. I command her. When God created all things and created man, he brought man right into the garden of Eden and said, take, I give you this garden, dress it and fill the earth with it. Satan knew that God had displaced him. He knew. And that's when the war began with man. His job is to see that man never gets settled. Everything you see Satan do is the same purpose. Don't get settled. Don't get settled. But hey, God is bigger than him. Have you considered that? Praise God. 
So when we pray, I, I'm encouraging you, your prayer should be, Lord, fill my heart with your wisdom. Lord, fill my heart with your wisdom. That's the prayer you should be praying these days. Fill my heart with your wisdom. I told the Ephesians chapter 3 that the, that, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will dawn on me. It will fill me. The spirit of wisdom and revelation will fill me. Can you begin to pray that prayer right now? Father, fill me with your spirit of wisdom and revelation. Fill me, Lord, with your spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. If this is what you pray. Father, I, I release these ones that are following into dimensions of your spirit. I release them into dimensions of your spirit. That they begin to bear the right kind of fruit in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.